Welcome back. So listen, when you become a new parent, well, everything can feel chaotic. Your routine goes out the window, feeding time, feeding yourself, all of it becomes a challenge. And that is when really trying to find those quick and easy meals to feed yourself can become a lifesaver. So here with recipes for new and expected parents are the co-authors of How to Eat with One Hand, great title. Welcome Christine Flynn and Emma Knight. Hi, thank you thank so you much for having us. Well, we're delighted to have you. And I remember back, as Mel was just saying, back to my early days of becoming a new parent. And it's true, you are always looking for healthy choices that you can assemble really quickly. So this book is a compilation of recipes, but also some of your experiences as new moms. So what were some of the things that surprised you both the most? Emma? Well, the first thing that surprised me was labor. So with my first <laughs> daughter, Esme, who's now three, I had planned to go to the hospital and ended up having her at home in the bath because it was just, it was quick. It was quick, it was intense, and uh, you can read all about it in the essay called Deliverance. What about you, Chris? I would say that the most surprising part of pregnancy was just finding out I was pregnant. And then <laughs> not too, too long after, I would say that the second biggest surprise, because um, I wrapped my head around having one child, was when the ultrasound tech flipped the monitor around and was like, it took so long because you're having two. <laughs> so, um, yeah. In light of these absolutely wild stories where we can imagine holding baby in one hand or maybe more than one baby <laughs> trying in one hand, you might have one hand free to feed yourself. And so we're gonna start with some of the recipes that are in this book, Christine. And the first one is called pan con tomate, which I believe the translation would be bread with tomato. What is this? How do we make it? I've made some toast, which I feel like most people can tackle that part. And then you just take a garlic clove. I have regular garlic. I smashed it a little and I'm just gonna rub it on the bread. There's a few different ways to do the tomato part, but what I like to do is just take a nice like ripe tomato and just grate it on a box grater. Nice. I've never done that before. <laughs> I'll just grate the rest of this and then I'm going to put it right onto the toast. Oh my gosh, it's a it's a for the Italianos, Cynthia, it's a little bruschetta. That's great. I love you. it. Yeah. That's great. I totally do this. Just drizzle a little olive oil over top. And that like is pretty much it. You can season it as you like. I usually just do a little bit of salt. Did I read that, you know, you might even suggest to new parents, how about a little tin fish on top? Tell us about that. Yeah, um, I am a big fan of tin fish. It's a great way to eat healthy-ish protein. Um, it's uh, really portable, it's convenient, and they make beautiful ones that have great art on the, uh, on the box. <laughs> so I'm just gonna layer some smoked trout on. It's, you don't have to, um, but it's a great way to kind of bulk it out and make it a little bit more of a meal. Well, you mentioned uh, breastfeeding. Um, I myself breastfed and in the early days, I mean, didn't know what I was doing like everyone else. And it's, you know, a lot of pain, a lot of like trying to figure it out. You're also always thirsty and you don't have hands. So Jason would sometimes, my partner, he would feed me, <laughs> but I definitely could go with something where I could just actually just drink him. So you have this great suggestion you called a peanut butter mother lover. I love that name. Emma, tell us about it. Yes. So I can relate. I'm still there with my eight month old and the hunger, the hanger, and the thirst are very real. So the original is, first you soak two medjool dates just in a little bit of water. That makes it easier on your blender. Um, pit them and just let them sit in water for a couple minutes. And then you put in one frozen banana, two heaping tablespoons of natural peanut butter, two teaspoons of cacao, a little bit of salt, a cup of ice, and about half a cup of the nut or oat milk of your choice. Blend that up and you have version a. I put some cacao mm -hmm. nibs on top for crunch and excitement. Um, and then version <laughs> B is the same, just I didn't include the dates and I added in about two cups of baby spinach. Those are great though. Like my mouth yeah. is salivating over that. Like it's smoothie season <laughs> in this house for sure. So good. Okay. So Emma, uh, you know, having pre-made things um, is also super, super handy. And um, that way you can just really literally grab and go, especially in the most desperate of times and hours of the day. And you suggest something called 2 a.m. cookies. Um, and you two ladies were so kind enough to send them to Cynthia and to me 
So please, uh, where did they get their name and take us through this recipe? So these are oatmeal date cookies that my dad actually makes. So he came up with this recipe. His name is Doug. He's a bit of a legend. So when I had Esme, my first daughter, I was up at all hours, um, as I am now with my second. And I'm sure you guys know how that how that goes. And so I kept a stash of super high calorie nut and seed kind of like health food store granola bars in my bedside drawer. And when I was up in the middle of the night feeding her, feeling ravenous, I would tear off the plastic wrap like a raccoon and <laughs> devour it um, in like a bite and a half. So my dad catching wind of this situation, he's a great cook, but he, he wasn't a baker really prior to this, but he caught wind of that situation and went to the drawing board and came back with a really lovely beaten up cookie tin that was fitted with parchment paper um, layers of these oatmeal date cookies. He didn't know it, but oats are actually great for breastfeeding. Um, and then dates are obviously super rich in minerals. And so, you know, there are nutritional qualities, but it's also just like an awesome, chewy, crunchy oatmeal date cookie. And we called them 2 a.m. cookies um, because that's when they were largely consumed. I was not huge into sharing them early on, <laughs> um, but I've lightened up a little, you know, later in motherhood. And now my daughter, Ezzie, and I make these together, and she refers to them as grandpa cookies. Aww. They're delicious. Mm -hmm. The book is, is basically broken into different parenting stages. But there's one chapter that isn't food recipes at all, and you call it home economics. Emma, why don't you start by talking a little bit about what this part is about? Yeah, so home economics might seem like an incongruous chapter name for a book published in 2021 by two feminists, um, but we don't think so. We think that actually, you know, it's important to recognize, especially in the past year when those of us who have been lucky enough to be trapped at home have really uh, encountered our spaces in a different way. The notion of the work involved, you know, the talent, the skill, the hours in maintaining a home that is restful and happy making and, you know, economical, because that is important, um, is is something that's worth acquiring. And we believe that. And so in the book, we include a chapter that's geared toward creating less waste, uh, you know, making your own fun and using the materials that you have on hand. So pantry ingredients, etc., to create joyful moments. Okay, so in line with um, this home economics chapter and learning how to do stuff at home, especially because so many people are stuck at home, spending so much time in the same four walls. So Christine, um, you're going to take us through one of the DIY projects in the book, and it's called DIY Bath Paints, which already sounds like a ton of fun, maybe for adults too. I don't know. Um, I'm really intrigued. So can you show us how to do this? It's a piece of cake. Um... And basically all you need are a few pantry ingredients. So I'm gonna do about a cup of soap. Um, it can be any kind, as long as you can put it on your kids, you can put it in the bath paint. Um, so about a cup of soap. And then I have some cornstarch. Whisk the cornstarch till there's like really no lumps. So I just have like a little muffin container and I'll give this to my kids um, with the paint in it. So I just kind of divide up the paints. I'll put a few drops of green in one because one of my daughters likes green the best, blue in another one. And that way, like you kind of divide up the colors and- Just regular um, food coloring? Regular food coloring. Once you've got these beautiful colors all mixed up, is it like when kids are in the bath, they're like what, painting walls or painting each other? <laughs> Yeah, kind of whatever. Like you're basically like they're painting each other with a little bit of soap and a little bit of cornstarch. And there's so many touch points for parents in a day, as you know, where things can get stressful. And in my household, bath time is definitely one of them. And any kind of trick you have up your sleeve to entice a child who does not want to get into the bath, to get into the bath, I say go for it, like whatever you have to do. We could all use all the bits of help that is available. So Christine and Emma for that, thank you so, so much for all of these wonderful ideas. Our pleasure, thank, thank you so you. much for having us. All right, How to Eat with One Hand is available now and all of these ideas and recipes, you can find those on our social media channels after the show. We'll be right back. Oh.